welcome to this week's episode of the Geek Buddies. <gasps> hey! Back at it again this week for another week of geeky goodness. We're gonna jump into some bunch of we're gonna jump into some trailers. We're gonna talk a little Superman legacy cast, uh, casting. We're gonna try Roka's rapid fire again, and we're gonna jump into conversations about summer movie predictions and a little bit of the uh, disappointment that's starting to creep in already at the opening stages of the summer movie season with some of the uh, fare that we've gotten. So we got a lot to jump into today for sure. Sit back, relax. Thanks for hanging out with us uh, for this show. But let's introduce ourselves. I am the outlaw John Roker, writer, producer, and host here on the Geek Buddies. I am Michael Vogel. I'm a writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies. And this is Shannon McClung. Uh, I'm a television actor and an animation writer where you can see some of our current work on Netflix right now with Strawberry Shortcake, Barry in the Big City, seasons one and two on Netflix, and season three coming next month to YouTube. Wow. Is there any chance that it could be Barry Allen in the Big City? Barry Allen in the Big City? Is that possible? B-E-R-R-Y? A flash? Uh, Barry? Am I giving something away? I'm just a guessing. A really, really fast baker. Ooh, yeah, I was gonna be like, what's a fast fruit? <laughs> I'm not touching that with like a berry hole. banana, and he's just like uh, he slides mm, around the city on like sure. his banana shoes. Sure, Barry Banalan. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> is this what it's like in the writers' room with you? Is this how you guys break stories? I love it. That is it. exactly how we break stories. <laughs> Stay that in is... your lane with the puns, Vogel. <laughs> Oh, oh. You, you can keep you can keep that lane. <laughs> Dick Grapeson? I don't know. Just going out there. Anyway, all right. Let's uh, let's move on here. I want to say that um, let's move on here. Uh, the way the show. Well, thanks, first of all, thanks to everybody who's joining us. Uh, who always joins us every week. We appreciate it. if you're new and you're trying out the Geek Buddies for the first time. Thanks very much for stopping by. Please remember to hit a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to uh, hammer that point home so we get to. 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's the goal here. So if you like watching the show and you haven't subscribed, do that uh, right now. And the way the show works is each of us brings up, brings up a geek news item, and then we talk about a main topic after we talk about all these geek news items. So, And we want to give a big shout-out to Realm FM. That's where we're at now. Realm, they are hosting our podcast now. now we're, of course, we're on Apple, and we're everywhere that you download podcasts normally, but the fine folks at Realm have taken us on and we are very excited to see what the future holds working with them. We're about three or four weeks in to our relationship with them. They've been fantastic, and they're about to announce our show on their main feed as well. So hopefully that'll bring new people over to hang out with us. So more buddies, the better. Uh, Michael, I think you're starting us off. What do we got? I sure am. And I just realized that I did not open the link to start us off because <laughs> I was distracted. Uh, and so I'm going to just sit here and vamp for a second oh, as right. I open the link. Um, vamping is what you do in the industry when you are not prepared and you need to be charming and have fun. And you just sort of talk to the audience until you're ready. And then you figure out that you are ready. And then you can stop vamping, which I will do now because okay. we're going to talk about superman legacy and the casting um so we've talked about this a couple weeks ago talked about how dc and james gunn were seeing a ton of people trying to find their new superman their yeah. new lois lane and after months and months of all of them sort of uh seeing probably everybody under the sun it seems like if rumors are to be believed yeah. uh that we are narrowing down on some choices and so according to rumors, the narrowing down is that for Clark Kent Superman, um, we've got Nicholas Holt, David Cornsweet, and Tom Brittany. Uh, right. So Nicholas Holt, obviously from The Great, from Mad Max Fury Road, from X-Men First Class. Uh, Dave Cornsweet is from, it was in Hollywood, and Tom Brittany is in Grantchester. Yeah, Grantchester, yeah. Um, and then for Lois Lane, uh, Emma Mackey from Sex Education, Rachel Brosnahan from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and Phoebe Dynavor. Yeah. Is that right? Dynavor Dynavor, from yeah. Bridgerton. Right, right. So, three and three. I'm sure that what they are doing right now is matching them all up against each other, seeing who is too tall, who is too short, who is funny, who is not, who has sparks, mm. who hates each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and hey, sometimes hating each other works. I mean, look, I guess. Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze 
could not stand each other on that dirty dancing set and they made magic. So, Hey, maybe if they hate each other, that's what we need. But gentlemen, what do you think of these choices? I mean, we've talked about some of them. Um, we've discussed some of the people we like, some of the people we think would not be as great, but if this is how we're narrowing it down, if this is where we're at, yeah. How does this bode for the beginning of James Gunn's DC universe? Yeah, it's real interesting because this is this was broke by uh, Justin Kroll and Anthony D'Alessandro over at Deadline. And uh, Justin uh, had a back and forth with Boris Kitt, who was at THR. Uh, those are the guys who would be break scoops. And, of course, Jeff Snyder as well on the hot mic. But they were going at it because Nicholas Holt has been a bone of contention for Boris Kitt and for uh, um, uh, uh, Justin Kroll. Because one of them thinks he's going to be Superman. That's Justin Kroll. Uh, Boris Kitt thinks he's in line for Lex Luthor. So it's a battle here between these guys about what the deal is. But Nicholas Holt's in the mix. Here we go again. Nicholas Holt was in the mix for Batman as well. So why are they bringing in Nicholas Holt? I've got some theories and some ideas because I don't think they're looking at him for Superman. I think the other two guys are who they're really looking at for Superman. And they want to see how they read with Nicholas Holt as possibly Lex Luthor. That's what I'm thinking. Or there are also rumors that he could, he didn't get Batman for Matt Reeves, but he might be James Gunn's Batman in the DCU. So he could be the Batman they're looking at, possibly Bruce Wayne down the road. So how do these two other guys who we've got up here, uh, Corin Sweat and Brittany, how do they have chemistry with Nicholas Holt? So it's a lot of questions because I hate to see Nicholas Holt going up again for a big role and not getting it they're always calling him shannon you and i've been actors we know what it's like to be the other guy they're bringing in uh and it sucks because they're just comparing you to them on the off chance that you just might book it but it rarely happens which is so frustrating uh as far as the women are concerned i like all three but come on brosnahan is the choice and amongst the guys they're all around their 30s or late 20s so to me i think brosnahan is the is the lock and the other two guys I mean, are the back and forth. Yeah. And look, I like. I mean, I've I'll, all three of these women are amazing actresses. Of they course. Are great, but yeah, if you yeah. bring up that, but if you bring up that photo again, I mean, one yeah. of these thing, one of these three looks like Lois Lane right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's not even like it's like there are three beautiful, talented women here, yeah, yeah. all perfectly capable of playing a great role. Yeah. But point point to Lois Lane. Yeah. It's not hard. It's not. It's really not that hard. And maybe, just maybe, they're doing the same thing. Maybe they're looking at the other two for a Harley Quinn or a Poison Ivy or something. So just it, throwing it out there. Uh, the overall. Nicholas Holt but thing. Like the Nicholas the Holt thing is interesting to me only because I feel like, look, he's super talented. Yeah, of course. I mean, anyone yeah. who's seen the great, seen the menu, he he is a, he is a great actor. Yeah. I feel like he is that guy that early on in his career, people were like, "You're gonna be." a huge star and they've tried and they've tried. He was in that Brian Singer, Jack and the Beanstalk movie. Like, Oh yeah. Like yeah, they, yeah. they have been trying to make Nicholas Holt. Right. That level of, he has not done the Chris Pratt is star Lord or right. the, you know, Paul Rudd is Ant-Man. Like he's been, he's been lined up for it, yeah. but he hasn't done it. I mean, yes, he was in X-Men first class, but like he has never, it wasn't a He's leader. never sort of broken through to be you're at that level of superstardom. And I feel like everybody want like everybody behind this and like his like like in Hollywood, there is a we want to make Nicholas Holt this and he hasn't broken through yet for some reason. Yeah. Shani, what are your thoughts on all this? So I am 100 percent in the Nicholas Holt camp. Really? Um, I, I, I think the examples like I do think that's an interesting theory you're bringing up, Johnny, about mm. about the whole Batman. But if this is a Batman who is on his fourth Robin, I think they will need to go for an older Bruce Wayne. Good point. Um, but that's my. But haven't if, they if, said they but I think they said they don't want to if, do that. I didn't. Well, no, but if but if they're saying that that it's Damien in the Brave and the Bold. I, I don't think I, I don't think uh, a, a young Bruce Wayne works. If you've gone through Dick Grayson, if you've gone through Jason Todd, if maybe you've gone you have Drake. May, sure, well, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. certainly possible. The but but in, in my comics, right? Yeah. In in my comics head canon, that's where for me that doesn't that theory doesn't pan out. But again, you, you could be right. Like that, they might not be doing that. Um, the the reason I, for the Nicholas Holt thing, it's interesting that you. I, Nicholas Holt hasn't not broken out because of Nicholas Holt. It's because of the movies not being successful. 
Um, Jack I, and the Giant Slayer saying, was yeah. not a was not a. But but I mean, you throw out Chris Pratt and Guardians of the Galaxy. That was a very very successful movie. Paul Rudd and Ant Man, successful movie. He's not been in a big movie yet. I mean, right. of those three guys, he is the only one in my in in my opinion yeah. Yeah. that has carried has carried a property like the great. I mean, that is one hundred percent him and Al Fanning. So I think this is for me. This is Nicholas Holt's to lose. I'm not. I'm not saying Nicholas Holt hasn't done his job as an actor. Right. Yes, he has been in big movies and those movies failed. That is why he has not broken through. Like all <laughs> I'm saying is Nicholas Holt hasn't broken through. Like but, yeah, he, but they haven't failed because been, of Nicholas. But they, they haven't not failed at all. because of him. He I'm, just yeah, hasn't nobody, been in the right movie yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's I think correct, but what I'm saying is but you're sure saying they're been... trying to make you're you're saying they're trying to make him a star and it's just not happening because he hasn't been in a in a successful movie. I mean, he's been an ensemble player in the X Men movies, right, right, right. But he's not been the lead of a of a successful right. movie of but which those been, movies haven't as, been successful. But as yeah. as Roka was saying, he has been put up for these things over and over and over again. Yeah, I'm not. I I did not know that I was speaking to the president of the Nicholas Holt fan club, <laughs> well, which I, but I, I, I wasn't. I'm ready, I'm I ready to fight. I'm ready to fight right now. <laughs> I, I was not. I was not. Uh, I was not. In fact, I think I said Nicholas Holt is a great actor at the beginning of my statement. <laughs> you said it Th in a dismissive just, way. <laughs> oh, wow. This is simply <laughs> this is simply a fact of how Hollywood works. Like there are yeah. you, you, you come into Hollywood, you're a good looking and talented actor or actress, you get a really good team behind you and your team says, all right, how are we packaging this person? What is this person's trajectory? Right. And and what I'm all I'm saying is that that team has tried repeatedly to send Nicholas Holt down this road. Now, yeah. to your point, they're like, all right, Brian Singer's doing this big giant movie. It's going to be huge. It was not. Right. Um, you're going to be <laughs> Beast in X Men. It's going to be huge. Like, and he did good as Beast, but that X Men franchise at the point where he was going to sort of be in a bigger uh, position for those movies, it kind of fizzled. So it's not his fault, and it just is the nature of the game. Like he didn't have that. He didn't. He didn't pull the. Uh, pull the slot machine and get all cherries. Like he didn't win yet, but clearly his team wants him to win and he keeps getting put up for these things. Yeah. And so is this his moment or is this going to be another one of the man, Nicholas Holt keeps going up for these and he's certainly talented enough, but for some reason he's just not, it's not in the cards for him again. Yeah, but what I will say with Nicholas Holt of those three guys, he's Wait, got, the only one that has carried a property. Yeah, um, I got now Nicholas I, Holt coming in now. Hold on. Uh, for, what, <laughs> what did you say about me? Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is something he says in the great. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, I, I went back and watched a little bit of Hollywood this morning just because oh, yeah. I, you know I, I I forgot that I had seen I, I said that I wasn't familiar with David Corn Sweat and I'm like actually mm. you know what I have I did watch that show let me watch the first episode he's very charming like he is yeah. a very very charming charming actor I think he would be he would be a solid choice the only one that I haven't seen yeah. is Tom Brittany um, like yeah. he was in an episode of Invasion on Apple. He was in Greyhound. Like I tried to find, like I went to watch his one episode, one episode of Invasion just kind of ran out of time. Um, yeah. Again, all three of these guys visually, I think, I think they, any one of them could do it. I'm pers personally in the Nicholas Holt camp. I think you throw some glasses on him. That guy looks like Clark Kent. Um, will he be a convincing Superman? He certainly has the chops for it. Now, Nicholas Holt and Rachel Brosnahan together, to me, that is that's your dream team. Like that's yeah. that's an incredible okay. that's an incredible package yeah. for me. Okay, uh, yeah. I, I, and the other part of that might be bolstering your case, Shannon, is that WB likes Nicholas Holt. They 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 really have a good relationship with him, and they may be like telling James, "Look, cast Nicholas, and then you can do whatever you want to do with everybody else in the cast." But we want Nicholas, as you said, he's. He's been a guy who's carried the franchise with great with uh, with L Fanning, but also had his shots. Certainly can sh certainly showed in Renfield. He's the best part of that movie. He yeah. he's an actor. He's a good good actor. Can we find the right part for him? I don't know if he reads Midwestern boy for me. And another aspect of this is all three of them are British, so it's like they're not they're not looking for it. It looks like they're not centering on an American well. Superman. So which is a really interesting point. But Britney has carried Grantchester. So if you're going to argue about carrying franchises, 
I mean, the great is on Hulu. It's not on, you know, it's not on HBO Max and succession level. It's certainly respected, but Grantchester is about the same level Whoa. as the great in terms of attention because people on the in the world watch Grantchester probably more than they watch Hulu, uh, the great on Hulu, possibly. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but, you know, that, that, that show is British and it's a British export, comes to the States, comes all over the world, might have more eyes on it than the great, but I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But I like Brittany. I like him. I've watched Grantchester with uh, with the leading outlaw, and I I like his his masculinity and his ease and charm and the little edge that he has at times. Yeah, that you like that? Uh, you like that edgy masculinity there, John? <laughs> yeah, and I I don't really read that with Nicholas. I, I think Nicholas is a guy that I saw uh, do my taxes. Like I just don't know if I 100 percent feel that from Nicholas. And I know he's been a dick in the great. I saw the first season of the great. He was fantastic in the favorite as well. Certainly he could play a dick, but I don't know necessarily that he can radiate that wholesome Midwestern want to hug the guy type of vibe. I got to tell you, and this is my, I opinion, tell you, my opinion. People, people in Kansas do their taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. Just, I'm sure. just so we're clear. It's just a little um, dirty for me. And I don't know if I hundred percent buy him a Superman. That's all. Right. But I mean, so I would argue Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this is a bigger Superman debate, but if he reads nerdy and wholesome to you, yeah, then no, no, he's Clark wholesome. Kent. Nerdy, 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 not wholesome. I didn't say you. That. No, you. I think you said wholesome a minute ago. Um, but I, but I, I'm, what I'm saying is, you're there's this this edgy masculinity guy that you're talking about. Yeah. is probably more of a Bruce Wayne Batman. The nerdy guy be, who does his taxes is Clark Kent. Right. right. Um. And to Shannon's point, I mean, look, I don't disagree with Shannon, just so we're clear, just so we're clear, because Shannon's very touchy today. Um, What'd you say? Yep, there it is. Uh, it is true that if Bruce Wayne has is at Damien and we and, and James Gunn has talked about bringing in the Bat family, right, right, that right. it would dictate that you would have to have been like, I had Dick Grayson, I had Tim Drake, I had Jason Todd. Reverse those last two, but uh, but I, I I had all of them and now I'm a Damien. But I also think that James Gunn and DC are not going to go down the road of making the same mistake they made last time of having a Superman who's young and then a Batman who is significantly older. Yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. That, I I think, think that I think that they've yeah. come out and said that in this new universe, like Batman and Superman need to be around the same age. I mean, maybe yeah, Batman yeah. has a couple years on Superman, but I don't think they're going to do Superman as this younger 30s guy and Batman is like a decade, 15 years older and has been doing this forever because yeah. then we're just right back to the story that we were telling in the Snyder version of things. And I don't think anybody's wanting to do that. Fair enough. Uh, Shannon, your thoughts on the ladies? You haven't speculated on which of the actresses. Oh, for it's you, Rachel Brosnahan. Yeah, for it's, you. it's it's Rachel Brosnahan. I mean, Emma Mackey. I, I'm not familiar with uh, with uh, uh, Phoebe Dynaver. Um, mm -hmm. I watched the first season of Bridgerton with my wife. I couldn't tell you what happened other than uh, <laughs> Reggae John Page was sexy. <laughs> um, I mean, you know what? If there was one thing that you were going to get right about season one of Bridgerton, you nailed it. So I'm that very was, proud of you on that one. That that was the takeaway. Um, but I mean, I love Emma Mackey. I think uh, Sex Education is such a wonderful series, and she just she presents just this fully form, just this fully formed character. And I imagine she would be dynamite as as Lois Lane. But yeah, I mean, Rachel Brosnahan, as you know, as Vogel talked about the, the graphic that you threw up, John, I mean, yeah. w one of them just looks like she just radiates Margot yeah. Kidder to me. Like she just yeah. radiates Lois Lane. Um, yeah. So yeah, I really hope it's I really hope it's Nicholas Holt and uh, and uh, uh, Rachel Brosnahan. Other, otherwise, I'm going to kick in Vogel's door. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I mean, but when you look at those two, I mean, when you look at Nicholas Holt, I will to John's to the other theories that John is pointing out, I, I am with Shannon. I think if they said to tomorrow, it's Nicholas Holt and it's Rachel Brosnahan, I would be excited about this new Superman movie for okay. sure. But when you look at Nicholas Holt next to the other two guys, uh, if you bring that up again, either of those two guys as a Clark Kent next to Nicholas Holt's Bruce Wayne or either, either of those guys as a Clark Kent next to Nicholas Holt's Lex Luthor. Yeah. I wouldn't be super mad about that either. Yeah. Like I, I think that, and again, you know, we, people have said this in the past about James Gunn and we've talked about this with, um, with both suicide squad and get and guardians of the galaxy. Yeah. One of James Gunn's strengths 
mm-hmm. is his casting. True. Very so, true. 100%. So like, so I, I, if this is where we're at with these six uh, performers, these, these three actors, these three actresses, yeah. This is a, even if it doesn't go the way that I want it to, even if Rachel Brosnahan doesn't end up being Lois Lane, although I would be a little sad, yeah. um, I feel like we're in a good position of getting sure. a Clark, a Lois and Clark that is going to deliver. Or a Clark and Lois. I mean, it's Lois called Superman Clark, Legacy. Man. It's called Superman Listen, Legacy, man. They Lois, call and Lois, Legacy, man. Lois and Clark. All right, fine. Lois and Clark. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's move on to our next thing, uh, Michael or uh, Shannon. Uh, um, actually, you know what? Let's take a break because Shannon's going to be a long one with Shannon. So let's take a quick break and we'll jump into some trailers here. And of course, we'll keep tabs on the Superman Legacy stuff as it pans out. It's happening next week and possibly Monday or Tuesday. It might be happening on Father's Day and Monday and Tuesday. So we'll hear some more, I'm sure, leaking out uh, after those auditions. And we'll be right back right after this. Do, 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 we got some trailers, trailers, trailers. Why aren't people going to the movies as much? Because there's a lot of stuff to watch on streaming. And we've got the, the three trailers for some streaming series that are coming out very, very soon. The first trailer we're going to talk about is our first real official look at the third season of Warrior. Warrior. Started off on Cinemax, went to HBO Max. Now it is just Max. Um, this is a fantastic series, takes place in 19th century San Francisco, based on the writings of Bruce Lee, has an enormous star in the making in uh, Andrew Koji as Assam, who, you know, some of you might, if you saw the Snake Eyes movie, he played Storm Shadow. Um, this is a season of t- TV that we didn't think we were going to get. I mean, it looked like after season two, it was kind of, right. it was kind of going to be finished, but uh they're coming back for another season and this uh, this uh, trailer just looks looks like more of the same which is all in this case a really really good thing we have some you know epic martial arts action we've got really good looking people we've got some epic irish beards in the form (laughs) of uh, of of bill the policeman um yeah i'm i'm super excited uh to see where this uh to see where this season is gonna go but i'll throw it over to you gentlemen what did you think of our first look real look at the third season of Warrior. All I thought was, I need to watch this damn show. So uh, I am <laughs> I, absolutely going to watch the show. Uh, I know season three debuts in at the end of this month. So I will spend the next two weeks slamming this show into my brain like I did with Succession. And hopefully I can convince one of you all to review it with me if we're going to go into the season three. So just throwing it out there. But this looks fantastic. I love I- the premise oh sorry mike go ahead yes i just i just wanted to throw in that like yeah knowing knowing john roca the way that i know john roca 10 minutes into the first episode of season one of warrior yeah. his brain is gonna explode and it's not gonna stop like it Fair just right. we're just gonna get these texts of how did i sleep on this show i can't believe this you <laughs> yeah. guys were right holy yeah. shit who's reviewing this with me i am i am like giddy excited about you about to watch this show fair enough i it's just i I had into the badlands ptsd and so i was worried about this show i was like i don't know if i need to do this again i tried three episodes of that and i just could not get into that but this from the trailer again it just makes just reminds me yet again i've got to jump onto this show so i will be doing that for sure so the trailer accomplished that i love the look of it love the uh, now the perry mason has been canceled which sucks Having an old time show that I can go into in the past and enjoy some really good writing, some good character work, some good acting, and some kick ass action. All of that speaks volumes. Plus, I'm a massive Bruce Lee fan. Uh, so I am excited to, to, to finally dive into this thing. But this trailer made me very happy to do that. Yeah. Mike? You know, kind of to Shannon's point about uh, Nicholas Holt. And if you would like to join the Nicholas Holt fan club, please talk to Shannon on his Instagram. I'm sure he's. Um, <laughs> But no, like uh, it's watching and this is actually what makes and and John, I think I'll be interested to see what you think of the first episode. Yeah. Andrew Koji is what makes this show. I mean, it's a great show across the board. It's great. It's it's yeah. directed amazing performances across the board. But the ver- the first five minutes of this show with Andrew Koji, you're like, oh, I'm in on this guy. Like wow. I'm in on this show. I'm intrigued. And he is one of those stars in the making. Like same thing with Nicholas Holt. Like they're trying they're trying to get him out there. They put him in his storm shadow. 
Mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't have done it, but hey, he was fine. <laughs> the, the movie sucked. But um, but yeah, he's another one of those stars in the making. And so he anchors this show. He is amazing. He is magnetic. Uh, his martial arts skills are ridiculous, but his acting chops are all there. Yeah. Um, and the thing about this show that has been great throughout, and this trailer kind of doubles down on it, and I'm super stoked, is yeah. we've had a lot of shows that are um, historical dramas that really put us back in an era – uh, of America that touch on issues of race, uh, issues of nationalism, like kind of all the issues that we've had as a country in the past that are very grounded and realistic and dramatic. Yeah. And we've had shows that are just balls to the wall and movies that are like balls to the wall, kung fu action spectaculars that yeah. are really kind of over the top and huge. This show manages to do both at the same time mm -hmm. in a really, really uh, stylized, fun way. And yeah. it's just this epic soap opera in San Francisco that touches on race, touches on all this stuff and has epic martial arts battles. Like it's everything you could want. And season three looks like it's going hard. I literally cannot wait to watch this. Yeah, there we go. Um, all right, Shane. Yeah. Yeah, Warrior Season 3 debuts June 29th when a lot of us might be watching Indiana Jones that evening. Maybe we can start the day off with the first episode of Warrior. <laughs> so our next trailer is for the second season of The After Party. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for Apple uh, Apple TV Plus uh, from Lord and Miller, mainly Miller, but Lord is Lord is a producer on it and, you know, wrote some episodes. You know, we've got uh, uh, Sam Richardson's Anik, Zoe Chow, Zoe and Tiffany Haddish's Detective Dan are all back. You know, the first season was all about a uh, after party of a class reunion and a murder mystery ensues when one of the guests go <laughs> ends up dead. And the second season looks really, really funny. Along with that trio of just, you know, comedic powerhouses. This season, we have Ken Jong, John Cho, Zach Woods from Silicon Valley joining. It just looks really, really funny. So, gentlemen, I'll throw it over to you. Oh, also, instead of a instead of a class reunion, this is the after party of a wedding. Yeah. So, what did you think of our first look at the second season of After Party? Well, I'll I'll take this one because I'm just gonna steal John's line. Watching Please. this trailer made me want to go watch season one of the After Party because <laughs> I still haven't watched it. So, what? I, I did. Crazy. You know, it's it, so good. No, no, no. And I, I mean, I, well, I remember when we reviewed the trailer for season one, I was like, oh my God, this looks great. I love, I love the vibe. I love what they're setting up here. I love that we're going to get each person's perspective. Like I love the cast. It was one of those shows that, and I don't know if this happens to anybody else where you'll get done with a day of work or whatever you're doing. You sit down and you're scrolling through everything. And it was always that show that I was like, I'm about, oh yeah, after party, I want to click on it. But then there was like, some other thing that I was like, oh, no, wait, I got to finish this first. Oh, no, wait, I told the boys that I would check this out. And so there was always another show that I kind of jumped over to, and I just never quite got to the after party. Right. So kind of similar situation, the season two trailer came out, and I'm like, well, this looks fucking great, but I kind of feel like I want to go back and binge the first season. So I, while Johnny is uh, <laughs> diving through Warrior, I will be watching season one of the after party to prepare for season two. Yeah, I think they're around 30 minutes, 35 minutes, right, Shan? 35, 40 no, minutes? No, they're, they're a little out. longer. They're almost they're an out. hour. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's a good show. It's a good show. We reviewed it back when I was doing the uh, HGA uh, review of that show, and it was a lot of fun to sit down and talk about that show. Great comedic stuff. I like this trailer. This show is really funny. Um, I'm a little concerned that they're going to wear out the gimmick of everyone telling the story in their unique way, but I'm hoping that these will be inventive new ways of telling the story. Already seen the black and white one with Paul Walter Hauser, I think. Looks very funny. So things like that. So hopefully they found new and inventive and funny ways to tell their uh, what they recollect about the murder. And the fact that it's Zach Woods being murdered, I think is very funny because I love that guy. And so the fact you're seeing flashbacks and you're seeing him the way he's dead, like what's this all about? Elizabeth Perkins there is the creepy mom, uh, which is really unsettling in some of the scenes she has with Zach. And I love the joke of Ken Jeong's like white people, rich white people whispering is always dangerous. Never a good thing. <laughs> and so I think it's a very funny joke. So, uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Sam Richardson, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for this, uh, but I'm, I'm kind of hitting my limit a little. Sam, can we get a little less Sam? I, I like missing Sam. I like Sam in doses. Sam a lot, I think, is getting to be for me. Uh, I, I'm hitting the kind of limit on Sam. So I hope that I'm going to enjoy him in this role because he feels – much more confident this season than he did in the last season. And he was kind of a prick in the last season, which you're going to find out, Michael. So I'm going to be very curious to see 
how what role he's going to play in all of this uh, as it goes down. And uh, I love Zoe Chow, so great to see her back. She was a revelation in season one. I hadn't seen much of her stuff, so seeing her in that made me go back and see some stuff with her because I like her as an actress now. Yeah. Hold Shit. on, I'm taking off my Nicholas Holt fan club president hat and putting on my <laughs> Sam Richardson fan club president hat. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Sam Richardson, yeah, the, the brief glimpse that we got of him in Ted Lasso season three, I was just like, I, I haven't, I feel like I haven't seen him since the after party season one. And I cannot yeah. wait to see more of his, more of his unique character. And uh, the after party season two starts July 12th on Apple TV plus. And to our last trailer, not a trailer, an exclusive first look, a little bit of a scene from the Twisted Metal series from Peacock. Now, this is uh, from Rhett, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick of Zombieland fame. Yeah. Um, stars Anthony Mackie, Nev Campbell, the voice of Will Arnett as Sweet Tooth, the, yeah. the clown. So I have never played one of these games. All I remember is basically that visual of Sweet Tooth, the clown, and it's a demolition post-apocalyptic demolition derby derby tournament called twisted metal that's held once a year not totally sure the 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 clip is funny it, yeah. it, it it is funny it's weird especially if you don't if you don't have a familiarity with the brand which not yeah. i don't think the three of us really do no. um but hearing the voice of will arnett come out from under a mask of someone who's clearly not will arnett um <laughs> it, it just looked it looks like it could be it could be a lot of fun not so sure but i'll throw it over to you gentlemen what did you think of our exclusive first look at twisted metal I mean, thong, 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 thong. I mean, that's a, I, 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 you know, I like Anthony Mackey. I, I got a sweet spot for Anthony Mackey. I know, he, I know I've heard rumors about him and his approach to things and a little bit of full of himself, but I don't care. That's how you establish yourself in this business sometimes, especially when you're a black actor. It's not easy, not a lot of opportunities. So you got to believe in yourself to get to the position. This looks like a lot of fun. And this is one of the reasons I like Anthony because he's willing to take on roles like this and push the boundaries and have a little fun and lend a little name recognition mission to a project uh, and of course twisted metal was already people are going to be interested in it but you put anthony and it kind of elevates it to a visibility where it doesn't feel like it's going to be one of these cheesy straight to dvd type things this one feels like it could be a lot of fun and judging from the 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 first look we got this looks like a really fun time for sure that's by the way that's samoa joe uh, uh for those of you who know professional wrestling there he is playing sweet tooth physically and arnett doing the voice which is unrecognizable by the way i did not know that was will arnett uh, so I thought that he did a nice job there voicing that character. So just the back and forth and the twists in the vibe of what's going on from beginning to the end of that scene, I think already lets me know this is the kind of show you're in for. Just so you're aware, this is the show. Don't complain later. So I, I'm excited now to see this because I've never played the video games, but this looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Mikey. Yeah, it's a weird. I mean. Peacock is, you know, uh, you got to give Peacock credit that they take some swings. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, with all the stuff that's out there and all the streaming services doing their things, uh, you know, Peacock is, is with between, you know, Poker Face and Mrs. Davis and now this, like they're definitely pushing the limits of getting out there and doing some weird shit. Uh, and this definitely looks weird. It was funny. It was good. I like the clip was great. It definitely gave me a sense of, okay, this is what the tone and the humor is. I don't know what this show is at all, but <laughs> like, all right, I'm in, like, I'll check it out. So it'll, I'm, I'm curious to see more, yeah. but again, and given the Anthony Mackie of it all, given the Will Arnett of it all, like I'll definitely tune in and check it out. Yeah. You talk about these things. I mean, like uh, based on real stories on a true story, right. Is out now. Uh, they've uh, you mentioned Buckus is another one that they've kind of, uh, put out there from Pete Davidson, the reality shows that they have that are big, the Bel Air remake uh, yeah. gets a lot of love and we're into second season with our friend Cassandra Freeman in it. So, you know, they, you're right, Mike, they, they push the uh, limits of what they can do. They kind of, they don't branch out too far out, but they love to play with what they have. And this feels like a perfect Peacock series. Shane. Well, we will find out on July 27th when Twisted Metal uh, premieres on Peacock. Bang. All right. Whoa, 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 What's happening? We really not going to mention uh, a little show on Disney Plus got its release date and had a little tease? Like, oh, we gonna, are going to mention we're gonna, it. We're not even going to, we're not even going to talk rush, about it. Don't rush the video. All right, are we ready? 
Are we ready for a new episode of... That's right, Roka's Rapid Fire is back, ladies and gentlemen. New segment I'm trying to make work. Uh, it, despite Michael Vogel's grin, I am trying to make work. We're going to make this a quick one. We've adjusted things for last time. Last time it took us 35, 40 minutes to get through this. So the way this is going to happen is I've got six to seven to eight topics here. Each of these guys gets a minute. I'm just going to do a quick uh, second long intro and we jump into it. So let's go. And I've got my little timer here next to the uh, next to my thing. So uh, here we go. Ahsoka new trailer, 30 seconds and a new release date announced August 23rd. Uh, Michael Vogel, go. I, I got a minute. Six seconds, 55 seconds. Uh, yeah, you get a minute. Look, you get a I'm minute. Go. All right. I'm super excited. Uh, yeah, look, I'm really excited. We got a date. Uh, I hope they don't move it. I'm I'm happy to end the summer with Ahsoka. Uh, the new tease didn't give us a ton of new stuff, but, um, you know, I think it doubled down on the stuff that we're all excited about. Like, we saw, like, the opening scene from Rebels in live action, um, which we saw in the first trailer for Ahsoka, uh, got a little bit more about Thrawn coming into things. Um, God, I don't know. I, a minute's too long. I, like, I can either talk for three minutes or I can talk for 30 seconds. I don't know right, 30 seconds. what to if do you're here. Done, you're done. Seed your time. Shit. To, okay, great. To, I'm in. I'm excited. All right, go, Shannon. Uh, wait, yeah, I mean, this is... Hold on, hold on, go. All right, go. Uh, so yeah, this is a lot of the stuff that we saw in the first trailer, which the first trailer was fantastic. But in this one, we get to see Sabine rocking a green lightsaber, which we yeah. had not seen before in that first trailer. So yeah, to close the summer out with this, uh, I, I think is awesome. Uh, I, I'm, I was I was bummed we didn't get more. I mean, I really want to see Lars Mikkelsen in all of his blue face Thrawn glory. Done. There we go. Yep, done. All right. August 23rd. That's when it's coming out. They announced it. All right. Let's move on to Cap 4 name change. Captain America changed its name from New World Order, which had wrestling references, but also uh, anti-Semitic references, global conspiracy uh, references, to uh, Brave, Brave New, New World. That's Brave New World. Cap 4, Brave New World. All right, uh, Shannon, go. One minute. Ah! Um, yes, it, I think a New World Order is a more uh, ominous title, um, but that does keep in line with with other cat movies that we've gotten, with Civil War, with The Winter Soldier. Brave New World sounds a little more optimistic, a little more like the first Avenger. And as this is uh, Anthony Mackie's first solo outing on the big screen as Captain America, I think an optimistic title is probably in in good order. All right. Uh, all right. Shannon, uh, Michael, go. Yeah, I kind of feel like New World Order leans on the negative. Brave New World leans on the positive. It's probably two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Uh, New World Order was probably what Cap was uh, was was butting up against. But Brave New World is the world that we want to see with uh, Anthony Ma with Sam Wilson as Captain America. So yeah. I, you know, I don't think it means too much about the uh, content of the movie. But I think Brave New World is probably just kind of a little bit of a better title than New World Order. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Next uh, subject, uh, Brian Singer is found is uh, self-financing a new documentary, trying to come back into into the uh, prominence here. Uh, says he's going to address the allegations about him. Uh, Vogel, what are your thoughts on a Brian Singer self-funded documentary, kind of in the vein of uh, Taylor Swift's Americana documentary, Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez's documentary, and Madonna now, executive producing and directing her own biography. What is it? Is this apologist? What is this? Go. I live in West Hollywood. And I have a lot of gay friends who have lived in West Hollywood for a long time. And when you've lived in West Hollywood for a long time and you have a lot of gay friends, you hear a lot of stories about people when they were younger going to Brian Singer's house. Mm. And so I am real, real curious as to what he is going to say in this documentary and uh, see how it compares to the stories that I have heard. And if it does, I probably would not be making that documentary if I was him. <laughs> All right, there we go. 30 seconds. Shannon, uh, go. Yeah, I feel like anytime you have to self-fund something, it's because you can't find money other places. Other Ooh. people don't want to make it. Now, that does not automatically mean that the story you're trying to tell is without merit. Um, in this particular situation, <laughs> um, when there has been this much smoke around one individual, chances are there's a little bit of fire. Um, so it seems like a risky move. Um, but yeah, I will, I would be curious what the content of this documentary is. 
All right, there we go. Good job. Good job, everybody. All right, let's move on to our next thing. And that is French, the French Connection. Four seconds of the French Connection has been censored by Criterion Plus on their uh, services, not overseas at Disney Plus, but certainly here in the States and on Apple TV. Four seconds in the four seconds, it is Gene Hackman as Pop Idol using the N word, and they wanted to remove that to maybe keep him as a hero. Gentlemen, is this censorship? Do you want to see this? Shannon, go first. Um, I, I think it is a risky proposition to go back into a into a work of cinema, into a work of art, and to change it. Because ultimately, I think uh, having some context, being like this, this is the time when this was made. Um, but I think instead of editing, I think maybe a uh, a warning should come up at the beginning of the movie, letting you know what you're about to see. Okay, like we had with uh, I think Wizard of Oz or something. They were proposing. A warning as well. Mike, your thoughts on this uh, four seconds being cut? Is this a slippery slope? Go. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. Don't do it. That's dumb. Come on, guys. We're all adults here. Like, we are, our history is our history. Our history is not always pretty. We used to be stupider in a lot of ways than we are now. And we are probably going to look back on this point in history and realize that we're pretty stupid about things that uh, we're hopefully not going to be stupid about in the future. And the only way that we can know that and the only way that we can discuss it as adults is to actually see what we were like and see what was appropriate and compare it to what's appropriate today. So we're all grown ups. Don't edit stuff out. Let it be what it is, and let's have a grown-up conversation about it. Fair point. Fair point. You know what? I haven't chimed in on any of this, so I'm going to use the spare 30 seconds. All right. one Real quick. Cat 4 name change. Love it. I like Brave New World. It, Aldous Huxley novel. There's other things, connections. I dig it. Uh, New Frontier has little vibes of that. I know that's DC versus Marvel. I like that. Uh, Brian Singer Doc thinks the dumbest thing in the world. As you said, too many people have too many stories. The smarter thing would have been an independent documentarian that he would have participated in and had the accusers confronting him and a back and forth. Oh, sorry. There you go. There, I got called on that. All right. That's what I was saying. And the censorship. No, thanks. No, thanks. All right. New thing. Blue Beetle poster. New one's out. Go. Michael thoughts. Go. It looks like Miami subs. <laughs> and I love it. It looks like Miami subs. It's got, it's the exact, remember in college, you go to Miami subs and you just felt like you were living in neon. Like that's what that poster looks like. And I'm sold. I'm going to go and get me a Miami sub and go see Blue Beetle. I'm in. <laughs> Shannon, do you have, uh, he has 40 seconds left. You want to take it? Go. Um, now, now all I'm thinking about is a submarine sandwich um, to, to the poster. Uh, nice, nice hero shot. Uh, you know, we get we get Zolo there at the top. Uh, you know, I hope this movie is as fun as this poster is uh, is uh, like Miami subs. <laughs> Fair point. All right. Uh, let's see. Next thing. Uh, what do I got here? So, OK, yeah. New one. New other poster here. Ghostbusters logo dropped. Uh, gentlemen, uh, thoughts on this? Uh, there's some icicles on it. Uh, what does this mean after what happened in the last uh, Ghostbusters afterlife film? Shannon, your thoughts go. Um, you know what? Icicles coming up from the bottom at a diagonal angle. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Anytime we get to see a, a classic 80s logo like that, that gets me excited. It was was Afterlife a great movie? No, it was OK. But that last five minutes sure was great. and makes me want to see one more one more adventure with this group. <laughs> All right. Michael, spare 40 seconds. Go. I agree with Shannon that uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife wasn't great, but the parts that were great were not that last five minutes to me. I thought that last five minutes was maybe a little bit too ham-fisted and a little bit too nostalgia oh. without uh, without actually justifying it. So oh. that being said, though, um, I think what Afterlife did do is it created a reason for us to continue to have Ghostbusters movies. Okay. I think that it kind of set up enough. It's not perfect, but mm -hmm. it's not bad. And it set up enough of a world with enough of a new cast for me to say, yeah, as a Ghostbusters fan, I am on board with this. So I'm intrigued to see where it goes next, and I'm excited. There we go. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Well, I'll let you have a few seconds because uh, Shannon spared some on the, on the clock there. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, what we do in the Shadows poster. New poster season five has dropped coming out July 13th. And this time, Kristen Shawl is highlighted here as apparently joining the cast full time, it feels like into seasons five and Harvey Guillen, they're still uh, trying to be a vampire. So Michael, your thoughts on that uh, poster? Go. It is a great poster. It's a great show. And Kristen Shaw is hilarious. And I'm very much on board for more of her in it. Uh, it, it is, it is a show that should not continue to be as good as it is. And yet it continues to find new ways to recreate itself and have fun. And I am really excited to see where they go next. All right. 35 seconds. Go Shannon. 
Uh, yeah, I think it's a great, fun poster. When I think of what we do in the shadows, that the show keeps continuing, I think of when we had the British office that was coming over to the U.S. And how that first season was a little like, ah, we're not so sure. But when they found their own voice, when they went to those more kind of, you know, broader comic places, that's where they really started to shine. And I think that is what is happening with what we do in the shadows. I know not everyone is a fan of that. I think Nadja having a bar was hilarious. Yep. Um, uh, I'm glad that we're going to get Colin Robinson back and do his uh nebbish glory and uh yeah throw in more Kristen shaw she's funny she's great on the show there oh perfect timing look at that the alarm just went off good job all right uh one more oh, i got a couple more things here bill skarsgård rumored for swamp thing uh shannon go huh that oh wow uh that do you like it is... do you not like it do you like it or do you not like it is what i'm saying well well i mean i i, I you know it's the, literally the first time hearing of it so i uh, gosh uh that's not who i would have <laughs> picture yeah, gee, there's an honest reaction i like this it's like your trailer it's like a trailer reaction to an honest it, story go ahead it's not who i would have pictured um uh and but you know after his turns in uh you know john wick and uh it sure give him a shot let's see what happens all right michael uh swamp thing is seems to be more of a manly kind of character to spill scars got to really radiate that would you think tom hardy more what's your thoughts on this do you like Scarsgard? i i think that I, what makes me laugh is that every time that there is comic book casting and you are talking about it the word manly masculine and masculinity comes up over and over and over again i'm changing i like um it. <laughs> i think that it's interesting i look look again if if part of what comes out of james gunn uh and peter saffron doing the dc universe is that we get really interesting casting across the board i'm into it okay. comic book casting is always weird because we tend to rely on what we think the character looks like but yeah. swamp thing is going to be a really weird character and just as when alan moore kind of took over swamp thing and kind of turned it into this isn't about a giant swampy monster in the in the swamp it is like this really kind of psycho analytical crazy nature like thing Skarsgård might be the guy to bring that to life. So I'm on okay. board and interested to see where it goes if it ends up being true. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Uh, let's move on to one last, uh, st oh, two last stories here. Uh, we broke this on the hot mic yesterday. Universal apparently is closing a deal to do an adaptation of Zelda from the video game. Uh, Michael, your thoughts. Do you want to see a Zelda adaptation here from Illumination and Uni uh, Universal after they did a $1 billion haul and counting on Super Mario? Um, one of our friends texted me yesterday and said, and I quote, I will read, this is why I will spend my 30 seconds said, I know it was inevitable, inevitable, but an illumination Zelda movie is literally my living nightmare. All I can picture is link jumping off a cliff, firing off an arrow and all of a sudden needle drop music born to be wild. It's a horrible idea. I know that we all love them. I know a lot of people love the Mario movie. It looked beautiful. There was no story to it. Zelda has a lot more mythology and needs a lot more than what Illumination can do. It is going to be bad. Michael. All right. Uh, Shannon, your thoughts on uh, Zelda as a, uh, a property here to be ad adapted. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of Illumination movies, but the ones I have seen always leave me wanting. And not in that, like, oh, I'll leave them wanting more. Just, like, you leave me wanting something. Um, that first Despicable Me, I was so excited for that. And it just didn't quite deliver. Um, but on the heels of this incredibly successful Super Mario film, it is not a shock that uh, Illumination, Nintendo, and Universal would be like, what else can we do? What's our second biggest brand? Let's go with Zelda. Um, okay. If the past is, we use that as sort of a uh, measuring stick. I, I, I don't think this adventure with Zelda is going to be legendary. Oh, 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 you know, you had to do it. You just had to do it. All right. Uh, just a, a quick reference here. This is what Michael was talking about. Miami subs. There it is right there. <laughs> there it is. In Florida. <laughs> that is Miami subs. And that's what Michael was referencing when looking at the movie Beetle poster. Uh, one last thing. Uh, this the bottoms trailer came out this week. We didn't talk about it, gentlemen. Your thoughts on the bottoms trailer, real quick? Go. Uh, I thought it was really, really funny. Um, uh, that that's all I got. I only watched it the one time, <laughs> so I don't have anything more than that. I just thought it was funny. Yeah, Mike, a, a, a lesbian story uh, told uh, with in high school, and but with a lot of sarcasm, a lot of the kind of shades of 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 a uh, uh, blockers Looks smart. and. Porkies and all these kind of old school films that have a little more of the uh, uh, 
humor, sex humor right out in front. And they got Skittles. Uh, they got the running back, uh, the old running back there from the NFL to play the gym teacher. So your thoughts overall on what we got here from Bottoms trailer. Two lesbians starting an all-girl fight club so that they can meet <laughs> chicks is not – not something that I thought that I would be seeing this summer of the movies, but after watching that trailer, I am 100% going to see that movie. When it says that it is the bloodiest, horniest film that you're going to see, I was like, well, you got my ticket. I'm in. <laughs> That's what you're looking for right there. Go and see it, guys. If you haven't watched that trailer, bottoms right there. Oh, uh, there we go. There you go. All right. And that does it for this episode of... <laughs> I feel like that went now, considerably better than last. That was, that was, I like, that was, that's the right vibe for it. That's the right vibe. I, now are we all going to get segments with little pictures and sound effects? That's what well, I want to know. If you come up with a segment, I will happily create a little picture and sound effects for you. Shannon, I, you not, not, not Shannon's dad jokes. We are not, that is not one of our segments. <laughs> that could be, if we, listen, if we do some extra episodes, we could do segments like that right. and make that available to only certain right. people. If we start a Patreon, just an idea, but yes, right. that went considerably better. I'm going to get a white hair wig and start doing the Roka group. I like the McLaughlin group. I think it's your number one. That'd be perfect. Anyway. All right. That's an old school reference. All right. Hey, let's, Harry, let's, hey <laughs> it's time for Roka's rants. We're going to talk about some things. Let's Google the cat on the moon. <laughs> hey, you ever have my episodes? This is a mess. <laughs> my uh, anyway. If your gun couldn't fire bullets, what would it fire? Mine would fire marshmallows. <laughs> I like the ladies. I don't know if I like the ladies liking the ladies. No, Harry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's take a break and we'll be back with our main topic here right after this. I remember Will Ferrell getting in so much trouble for that too, for some of the people who love Terry Carey too. It's a shame because that's very I love those sketches. Hey! Where's the sun? Hey! <laughs> He goes into uh, it a little bit on uh on the smartless smartless uh, oh. on smartless uh the Jake? on the 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 documentary on Max right now where it's the guys doing their live smartless tour right and uh, Will Ferrell's one of the guests and he does a little bit of it and it just made me made me made me nostalgic nostalgic might have been might have inspired us to go on the road ladies and gentlemen we are considering that so if some of you want to start having some conversations uh, and especially uh Bosco back there. We can uh, we can uh, look at maybe going on the road with the Geek Buddies. It would be a lot if of fun. If we did a Geek Buddies, if we did a Geek Buddies road show, Bosco is absolutely coming. He's, he's the mascot. Get his own as segment. He, as he's as he's hanging out on my bed back there, seeing Bosco. What, how up. much is the Flash going to make, Bosco? How much? Hey, hit the paw, hit the button, let us know. Um, um, all right, what do you got, so, Mikey? So speaking of, look, we were talking about this. We we're talking about what we wanted to talk about today, and. Uh, you know, we love as geeks, we love all these big franchises. We cover all these franchises, but it seems that we've been having a lot of conversations about, uh, things not quite living up. Mm. And as geeks, that's part of the game. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, but we've talked a lot about box office predictions in the past couple weeks. And, um, right now, Indiana Jones and the dial of destiny is tracking at about a $60 million domestic opening, yeah. uh, transformers rise of the beasts, which is out this weekend is tracking around, uh, let's see 50 to 60, about 50 to 60. So, uh, you know, these are both franchises, obviously Indiana Jones, uh, from back in the day is one of the biggest Hollywood franchises there is yeah. transformers in its heyday was just raking in the money. And, you know, with Dial of Destiny, it premiered at Cannes, and uh, the reviews that came out post that big premiere yeah. um, sort of are leading to what the um, what the box office predictions are. Transformers Rise of the Beasts, uh, kind of similar. I know Johnny saw it, um, yes, it came, out of the, came out of the theater, and Johnny as probably the biggest Transformers live action fan on the Buddies crew, uh, reactions seem to be a little muted. Yes. Yes. So how are we feeling about this? You know, what does it mean that we get excited about all these big movies? We get excited about these franchises and why are they not hitting? Why are we continuing to get disappointed and how do we fix it? Where do we go? I mean, you know, we've talked about phase five of the Marvel cinematic universe, not being what we want it to be. Although we're all very excited about the announcements from Lucasfilm with three new star Wars movies in the works. Uh, 
Star Wars movies are notoriously tough to hit the mark. Are we setting the bar too high? Are the movies setting the bar too low? What's the problem, guys? Why can't we? Uh, what's happening? It's a good question. Um, I think people are, as we're getting more and more of this stuff, and as you said earlier, Michael and Shannon, there's more and more stuff on streaming. So there's all this money being spent to essentially recreate the cinematic experience at home. And so I think people are becoming more and more picky about the things they're going to spend their money on. And as much as people may be upset about Rotten Tomatoes and upset about all these things where they collate people's reviews and have a number, people are using those as tools to decide if they should go see movies or not. It doesn't always work, but certainly that's a part of it. And, you know, Little Mermaid might be under, is going to probably underperform pretty significantly here from what people had expected, which was a billion dollars, which I thought was a little insane anyways. But certainly... It's going to underperform here. But you're looking at Transformers. I'll tell you this. My out-of-theater reaction is at almost 20,000 views. That is surprising to me because I thought there wasn't a lot of um, buzz for that Transformers film. But now, according to the deadline, it's tracking for $110 uh, million forward. Sorry, it's, it's tracking at 68 to $70 million right now in terms of the start because of what happened Thursday. Yesterday, it had a pretty good uh, opening previews uh, number so to me that means like there's still some franchises that are a little bit bulletproof even if the reviews aren't 100 there but i think the public is demanding better i think ant man of the wasp quantum mania was a large swath of marvel fans who had normally been there going you know what step up to the fucking plate because we're not just going to give you our money just because you stamp marvel on it so I think people are becoming more and more discerning and certain ones are going to pop up that are going to be anomalies for sure films or whatever, like Mario. A lot of people were surprised by how well Mario did, but it's an anomaly. It didn't get that well reviewed. It got good reviews, not great reviews. And so it did well for what it did. So, But I think people are going to be much more discerning now going forward about what they spend their money on. And certainly we're seeing uh, across the Spider-Verse, it is coming out, I think, in 110 days or something like that. So it might be coming out soon across the Spider-Verse for people to watch. So people are looking at a shorter and shorter windows from which to see these movies as well. And they might be more and more patient. So I think it's a combination of factors that are making people a little more uh, hesitant to show up some of these bigger titles. Shannon? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the options at home are better than ever. If there's something that you don't necessarily feel like driving out and finding parking and spending X, you know, how, however much money you're going to spend on a ticket, yeah. however much money you're going to spend on popcorn. Um, when some movies are coming out two, three months later, uh, a lot of folks are choosing to wait. Now to the movies specifically that you mentioned, like Rise of the Beasts, um, you know, that th th what it's going to do it, just based off of the first weekend is a gigantic improvement over the last two movies. Yes, 100%. Um, 100%. Uh, so I think that's actually, that's a good sign that yeah. I think Bumblebee only made like 25 million domestic its Tw first weekend. 21.6 million. And last night made 44.6 million over a Wednesday to Sunday frame back in 2017. And apparently... Rise of the Beast is tracking excellent, according to Deadline, in China. And that's where it usually makes a lot of its money, Transformers does. Yeah. So I think that's actually, you know, that's actually a good sign that there, there are signs of life in the Transformers franchise. And as, as successful as Bumblebee, what it wasn't what they wanted, it did sort of reinvigorate the franchise from a storytelling perspective that by the end of the Bay movies, I mean, they were doing well internationally, but domestic audiences had kind of tired of it. Yeah. Um, approaching it from more, and again, I haven't seen Rise of the Beats, but but approaching it like with a stronger story uh, that Bumblebee had that like maybe Transformers is actually on the upswing here. And when you look at international audiences, um, you know, giant robots running around breaking shit up, um, People like that. That that is a universal language. Everybody gets it. Yeah. Um, to Indy, you know what? I mean, I I love Indiana Jones. It is also it is very much an '80s franchise. Now people know Harrison Ford. He will always be linked to Han Solo first, and Indiana Jones second. Yeah. Um, when you know Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out 15 years ago, it did not capture the imaginations of the youth the way that the original films did in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that it is 
Dial of Destiny is tracking well with older guys, that's not a shock. Um, the younger audiences, eh, they're just they're just not as in love with this character as we were. Now, if the response at a con had been huge and everyone's like, it's back, would it be that much more? I kind of don't think so. I think the people that want to see this movie, that it's opening weekend is bulletproof for the audience that wants to see it. Yeah. Um, what br what gives a movie legs is people going back to see it and bringing people who haven't seen it. Um, that's why, you know, Spider-Verse is going to have those legs because those who, who saw the movie want to see it again. Uh, one from, from an Easter egg perspective, like I have to, I have to figure out who all of these various spider, spider people are, but also it's the type of movie that you want to watch other people's reactions to. Right, right. And that's why you want to bring, that's why you want to bring folks that haven't seen it. Um, with Indiana Jones, I don't know. I mean, I saw Kingdom of the Crystal Skull twice in theaters mm. because after the first one, I'm like, oh, it, it, it was probably before <laughs> they started doing the midnight movies at 7 p.m. I'm pretty sure we saw it at midnight. Um, so I was like, you know what? I, I, was I was probably tired. It's probably my fault. <laughs> it wasn't good. <laughs> and then watching it again, it was like, oh, no, it really wasn't that good. And I still bought it on Blu-ray. I still bought the 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 four pack when they released it because I'm just such a fan of that character. Right. Um, you know, it, it seems like audiences are waiting for that next big thing. Back in 2008, that next big thing turned into Marvel. Um, before right. that, it was like the first it was like the Lord of the Rings. Like, you know, this is the first time this epic fantasy has been adapted for the big screen. I think audiences are waiting for that next big thing. And maybe right now, based off of the box office of this year, yeah. maybe it's a swing back to animation. Like the, the two most successful movies thus far are Super Mario and Spider-Verse. So maybe this is going to be a little bit of a renaissance for animation. It could be. I think. I, where I'll disagree with you guys a little bit okay. is that I think we always fall back on, well, look, there's a lot of really good stuff on streaming. People don't want to go to the movies. It's a hassle by the time you get the tickets and you get the popcorn and it's all this. That's all true. And there's always going to be people that are like, I'll just sit at home. But it is clear when you look at box office that if people want to go to the movie, they're going to fucking go. Yeah, sure. I just went to go buy tickets. My little brother just got back into town and he was gone last weekend when Spider-Verse came out. So I was like casually going to the AMC app to pick us up some tickets to go see it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And half the showings are sold out second weekend for Across yep. the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, shit. Um, so when people want to go, they want to go. I think what it is, and I think the biggest issue, I look, if we didn't have all these franchises yeah. uh, churning out all this content, we'd have... Geek Buddies would be half as long. We wouldn't have as much to talk about. Like, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that we get more DC movies and Very more true. Marvel movies and more Star Wars movies and more Star Trek TV shows that, that we have these and more Transformers, that we have these franchises that keep going. Yeah. Here's the issue, I think. The big issue is a lack of uh, courage to take risk. Mm. I think when you have these big franchises – and you got a bunch of producers in a room and everybody's looking at Twitter and everyone's looking at who's upset about what and you wanna make something, okay, well, let's make sure we do this, but you know, you can't do this and the mythology says this and you end up with these things that just are, uh, they fall apart under their own weight. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk about the fatigue of the MCU, uh, when you talk about the DC universe not working, when you talk about the Transformers franchise and kind of where it got to with the base stuff, it just, you're just like, I don't even know why I was excited about this in the first place. And you go back to when they started and you're like, this was fresh and new and different. And when you look at across the Spider-Verse, like, look, we've seen a bajillion Spider-Man movies. Now, granted, it's animated. It's Miles Morales. Right. There's a lot of difference about it. But I think the reason that people are going in droves to see across the Spider-Verse is because in addition to being an amazing Spider-Man story, it's telling a story in a way that we've never seen before. It feels new. It feels different. And I think that with Star Wars, even with Indiana Jones, with all these things, like there's just this sort of desire. It's it's the it's the it's the push and pull of nostalgia versus uh fresh and new. 
And I think what Marvel managed to do for phases one, two, and three is they were hitting the nostalgia button because it's all the characters we grew up loving, but we were seeing them do stuff we had never seen before in a connected movie universe that we had never seen before. Now a connected universe is what everybody's doing. Yeah. So it's like, well, what's what's special about that? So I go see Quantumania and it's tying into everything else and we've got all the Council of Kangs and we've got all this stuff going on. And I'm like, yeah, cool, great. Loki season two, I got it. I've been I've been doing this for a decade now. What's different? And so I think that's the real thing. I mean, at the end, it's it's sort of like the truism that's always true. It's like people are gonna go see something if it's good. Everything everywhere all at once right. is the weirdest fucking movie in the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody loved it and it won Best Picture. And so I think that if we're gonna continue doing these franchises, if we're gonna do more Star Wars movies, more Marvel movies, more DC movies, more Transformers movies, just go down the list. I'm on board. I'm a I'm a child of the 80s. I want you to yeah. keep making all of them. But figuring out how to make them new and push the limits of what we're seeing in cinema as you're giving me these characters that I know and love, I think that's the key. It's an excellent point you bring up, Mike. So I'm looking right now at the top. I, I just typed in the top 20 uh, films domestically here, um, uh, box office wise, right? Uh, Super Mario Brothers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avatar, Ammon and the Wasp, Quantumania, Little Mermaid, John Wick 4, Across the Spider Verse, Creed 3, Fast X, Puss in Boots, Scream 6. Megan, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons, Evil Dead Rise, Cocaine Bear, A Man Called Otto, Shazam, Air, the Jesus Revolution, and 80 for Brady. So for the most part of the 20, it's like 17 out of the 20 are connected to larger franchises or installments of trilogies or franchises that have come before. And there's not too much. Even Dungeons and Dragons can't necessarily be considered original because it's an already existing property. Right. Megan is probably the most original of the ones that I've Red here uh, and Cocaine Bear and a man called Otto, which is surprisingly had a sixty-four million dollar opening, and uh, that is with. But that's like Tom Hanks, and then Jesus Revolution, which I don't really know what Jesus Revolution is, unless it's a Jesus Kelsey film. Grammer, oh, I think. Right? Oh, okay, okay, Kelsey. Oh, of course, Kelsey. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> so that shows you a little bit that there is a a religious side of this, at least for a, a couple of films that can get people in in the seats and make some money. But for the most part. All of this is property or franchises that we've all seen before or know um, already. So your point of not taking chances seems to be bearing fruit here as you look at the top 20 films. And 80 for Brady, of course, is, is its own thing as well. So you're looking at that, and it's pretty much all this the stuff that we've seen in installments. So what is going to help people take the chance yeah. You know, to, to kind of branch out and try something new and see if people will come see it? Because I would argue... Nobody goes see everything ever all at once as well as uh, maybe they're oh, sorry. I would argue that there's, you can make a case that people might not have gone to see everything ever all at once if they hadn't already been conditioned by seeing some multiverse stuff already in the theaters. And I wonder if that would have affected the box office overall. But yes, that was a fantastically interesting and unique film for sure. Well, and also when, I mean, granted it, it was from A24, which is, you know, a, you know, a famous right. you know, indie studio, right. um, you know, everything, everything, everywhere, all at once wasn't that expensive. And that's what is, well, you yeah. know, people, you know, with those big original ideas, uh, uh, studios are afraid of that because yeah. it's, it's investing a lot of money in an unproven, an unproven concept. Yeah. Um, and ultimately what's going to happen is you're just going to have to have some brave folks be like, all right, this this is a big swing. Um, let's see what happens. But yeah. right now, because we're still very much living in the era of IP, people want that built in audience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think but and I think too, I, I think that that's all true. And I mean, I'm definitely a proponent of give me new stories, give me new characters. Like I want to see more yeah. Star Wars, but I also and I want to see more Star Trek, but I also want some brand new sci fi thing to come out and make us all like go fucking ape shit. And mm -hmm. I can't, and I'm like, oh, when are we gonna get another sequel to that? And so, you right. know, you can do both, but I think a lot of times, as happens in these geek discussions, it turns into, well, are you gonna give me the giant IP franchise or, or are yeah. you gonna give me something new? Right. And I think the reason that Across the Spider-Verse is the thing that we're all kind of going gaga for right now is because it does both. Yeah, it's giving me nostalgia. We are seeing every Spider-Man that we've ever loved 
in one movie. So yeah. you can't say it's not nostalgia. You can't, it's it's referencing the amazing Spider-Man. It's, rep, it's referencing the Raimi Spider-Man. It's referencing some spectacular Spider-Man. So it's giving me the nostalgia of a bunch of things that I love, but it's also doing things I've never seen on screen before in a movie. Yeah. So I think that as we get into these discussions about, well, don't give me more Star Wars, give me something new. 100% give us more new stuff, but also to the studios and to the producers and to Kathleen Kennedy, you can give us Star Wars and give us something new at right. the same time. And I think that if you can do that, then we'll live in this franchise IP world uh, even longer than we already are. Yeah, I'm going to be real, real curious to see how Oppenheimer does when that comes out. Is Oppenheimer going to be essentially the gone girl uh, of that of this year? Like, you know, how Gone Girl did so much. And people now would be like, no one would go see Gone Girl now to the levels that they did back then. And it's just like music, right? You, you, the, the hit song in 2023 is going to sound way, way different than the hit song in 2013. Those 10 years can make a difference. Hell, five years can make a difference. Go back to 2018 and see what the hit song was. Does it sound anything like what you, the style of music in 2023? It's the same thing with people's tastes in movies. It just changes completely. 1973 to 1983 are two completely different dimensions of movies uh, it, what you, that you're looking at. So it just may be something that we're kind of figuring out in this transition phase about how to make the balance of new, interesting, exciting stuff that is an IP and IP stuff as well. And I think the other side of it, Michael, what you said, and I want to wrap up here, is that we're, I think we as an audience are demanding, okay, we will be here for your IP shit. Do better films. Take yeah. more time. Take more space. Do the scripts. Those kinds of things. You know, it's a, it's a really important thing to be aware of. And I think that's also the balance that you want to see. Um, you know, bring it to the level that we want to see so we can go and support it. And, uh, you know, and it's a positive overall. Everybody wins in that situation. Yep. Uh, Shannon, any final words? Are we good? No, I think we're good. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And we'll see, you know, maybe Nicholas Holt is Batman. We'll sell the whole thing. Or Superman will sell the whole thing. There. <laughs> I mean, can you throw the graphic up one more time, Johnny? Okay. Of him, okay. It, of him is being it, angry? Of him no, being no, angry. no. The, the, oh, oh, the, th okay. the three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is interesting how the, the, two, the two guys look very healthy and Nicholas Holt looks very, very pale. Like he's <laughs> out at night. <laughs> I mean. Beating criminals to a pulp. Like a Batman. Maybe. Yeah. All right. All right. There we go. All right. Well, there's our show. Thank you all so much for uh, watching or listening to us. You can always listen to our podcast, which Mike will tell you about. But we appreciate you all hanging out with us uh, and watching here on YouTube. Shannon, what do we have to tell? Yeah, if you'd like to follow us on social media, on Twitter, it's at Geek underscore Buddies. On Instagram, at The underscore Geek underscore Buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung. On Instagram, at Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow Mr. Vogel and not be a member of the Nicholas Holt fan club, it is at MK Tune. If you would like to follow Mr. Roca, it is at The Roca Says. Mikey. Well, if you like two people that give you really good commentary and one person that is so far up Nicholas Holt's ass he can see out of his mouth, wow. uh, we are the place for you. Um, and here is what you can do for us if you want to keep having some Geek Buddies fun. Um, smash that like button below. Subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw Nation page. Check out all the content he's got there. Leave your comments below. What do you think of Superman Legacy casting? What do you think about box office movies? What do you think about all the trailers we talked about? And are you a fan of this whole uh, Roca rapid fire uh, you know buy yourself some Miami subs leave some comments below if you are listening to us on podcast uh, go ahead and leave us some comments and some stars so we go up in the rankings if you are not listening to us on the podcast go ahead and try it out it's geek buddies on the go and you can't go wrong with that um, and as always the best thing that you can do is retweet this video post it on your socials send it to your friends and tell them to hang out with your buddies the geek buddies here you go all right you guys are awesome we love you madly have a great weekend and and we will talk to you next time with another brand new episode of The Geek Buddies! <gasps> hey! hey!